Hello and welcome to Weekly Weird News, brought to you by Cody the Boy and the Post-Truth Apocalypse. I'm Ben, as always, I'm hanging out with Mike, Hello, Claire, hey. and Pete. Hello. This week we bring to you the weirdest news we found on the internet this week. That's right. Woohoo! Absolutely. It's in one after the other, easy to follow the format. Yeah. We call it Weird News. Because it's mostly weird. Yeah. It could be anything. We'll find out. Right. Cats out of the bag. DNA test confirms big cats are on the prowl in the British countryside. Big news if true. I've always, I've known it for fucking years. I've believed it for a long time. So it doesn't surprise me whatsoever. They've just actually found DNA proof of it now. Yep, apparently so. I've had up weird news mm. before, the Telford Beast. Yeah. Telford Beast. Mm. The shocking revelation comes after documentary makers spent years investigating sightings across the country. And now, DNA from a black hare caught in a barbed wire fence following a sheep attack has offered definitive proof of the big cat's existence. Hmm. Fantastic. Well, not, but yeah. Well, it says definitive proof, but then it's in quotation marks, so I'm, I'm a bit sceptical. Hmm. Well, the hare was recovered from a farm in Gloucestershire where there had been some unusual predatory activity and video footage of a large black animal captured only a few miles away from the sample was enough to raise suspicion. Forensics at a top laboratory <laughs> have now confirmed the hair matches the DNA of a big cat species with a 99% match. Oh, that's pretty conclusive then. Yeah. Not 100%, but... Any Americans, if you'd like to uh, send in clips of you pronouncing Gloucestershire for us, that would be wonderful. Uh, You've already told me how to pronounce it. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> gotcha, Chestershire. Worcestershire. It's Worcester sauce is why everyone confuses, isn't it? <laughs> Worcester. 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 Do you see it? Yeah. For decades, people in Gloucestershire and across the UK have reported sightings of what appear to be black leopards. Witnesses have described them as, quote, healthy and confident, suggesting they grew up in their environment. I don't know that. The assumptions. Well, you can tell a confident cat strut, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows what a confident cat strut looks like. On occasion, we all kind of do it. Yeah. <laughs> and purr. <laughs> exactly. These stealthy predators mainly prey on wild animals like deer, but they've also been reported to attack foxes, ducks, geese, and even pigeons. Well, they can switch to sheep. It does seem they prefer a much, much more natural game. That's fair enough. And it makes sense, though, that they have been brought up in this country because their mums and dads, etc., and their mums and dads would have been released, like, 40 years ago, yeah. 50 years ago. So three or four bloody generations down the line, they're well adapted. Thing is, right, first of all, what kind of idiot, A, wants a large cat like that as a pet? Because you know it's going to fucking savage you one day. Yeah. Look at the Siegfried and Roy. That lion nearly killed him. Mm. I get savaged. That tiger, sorry, that white tiger. I get savaged by my ex-wife's fucking cat. That's because your ex-wife's so cat. No, 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 he's playing, but when he's playing... I've got scratches all over my hand and that from yesterday where I'm just playing with him. He wow. fucking savaged me. And it, so imagine what a panther could fucking do. It's, it's going to turn on you one day. <laughs> you keep any wild animal, it'll turn on you one day. But even playing, my point yeah. is, it's going to fucking savage you playing. And you don't want to get savaged by one of them fuckers, right. do and, you? And then second of all, when they say, oh, you can't keep those pets anymore, you manage to survive that period, you go, hmm, what can I do with my panther? Give it to a zoo? Release it back into its natural habitat? No, that costs too much. I'll release it onto the moors. The, the problem was, there was a large number of people that ignored the law, and they kept them for, for longer, and then they started to crack down, and they were fucking raiding places that they believed to have these exotic animals. That's when they started just releasing them, because there was no longer the option for them to... Am of amnesty basically there's no longer a wild cat amnesty where you can go take it to the nearest zoo and 
that's fine because now the law had been in place for a few years. If you went to the zoo with this, you're getting fucked. Yeah. You're getting charged for having this yeah, exotic yeah. illegal. That's so that that's why. Where from. That's why they were releasing. I'm just releasing into the wild. I do apologise to the motorbike going by and listen to what people speak. Is I think I was hopefully you, mild you, enough you could to have spread it out. It was there, <laughs> but you could have over it. Well done. Yeah, but I just think it's fucking idiotic. Why would you want something as a pet for yeah. a start? Ridiculous, isn't it? It's a status yeah, symbol, it is, isn't, it? isn't it? I think like a status symbol. Yeah, but you've had people. Think. I'm genuine. There's people had these in flats. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Me. You know. Chester in here is enough, isn't it? Yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> a fucking tiger? You'd never get the sofa. No. I, what, what would I? Where would I sleep then? And, and when oh, exactly no. where would Pete sleep? And second of all, when so I, I still sleep, haven't left. <laughs> and that thing bats you awake at four a.m. demanding food. You've probably lost an eye. <laughs> Even if you declawed it. Yeah, you, it'd still fuck you up, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. You'd probably fuck it because you declawed it. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be happy. It's just cruel, so... Oh, awful thing. Awful no, thing. I've never... Not. No, no. Don't condone that in any way, shape or form. Absolutely not. But yeah, so either way, Divinity Proof, Beast of Bodmin Moor, absolutely true, man. Well, well, the one in Gloucester. Gloucester, yeah. anyway. Gloucester. Yeah, let's assume that every every <laughs> big cat legend no, now is assume. actually true. <laughs> no, it, it's certainly... No, it's, not, it's 99.9% true. It's definitely 99%. more... Definitely more yeah. valid now. Yeah, more valid. It? Oh, God. This is a bit grim. Man <laughs> yeah, kept... a bit grim. We love it, grim dark. Man kept father's dead body in the freezer so he could talk to him. Oh, oh bless him. No. The 82 year old told a local newspaper that he stored the corpse of his parent who died age 101 because I did not want to let him go or I would miss him. Oh. 82 years, though, of being with mm. your dad or. It's just, yeah, they were obviously close. The town of Landgraf in the Netherlands. He decided to put his parents' corpse in the freezer when he died of natural causes, so he continued to talk to him. Police are investigating now whether any fraud has been committed. Do you think that means he's like, is he sitting there in the kitchen with him, speaking to him in the freezer with the lid up? Or is he getting him out of the freezer every night and propping him in the chair and talking to him? What he's done is... He, in the freezer. No, he, he's got like one of those fridge freezers. He's he's made like a head hole in the freezer. Yeah. Bit, so he just has to open the freezer bit at the top yeah. and to see his head. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I guess that could work. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, <laughs> it's either that or you're putting a TV in the kitchen. Or Dad's wherever, your favorite you, or wherever on. you keep your freezer. Dad, your favourite film's on? Frozen. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I no, no, it. no, you never get it. <laughs> no, nope, it's on. Claire, it's on. Claire, Mike. No, it made me laugh. Triumphant. Come on, you all laughed. I'm you afraid it's on. Laughed. Come on, give him the crown. Oh, I don't know. He's a triumvirate. That's, yeah. that's the best one he's done, yeah? We'll give it. Yeah. Him, so. All right. <laughs> okay. He's only taking you around six weeks. All right. Okay. I've got the crown! <laughs> Goes back to a crown now to be the TR, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Although I, I don't think his, his favourite film would be Frozen, would it? <laughs> no. It'd be Weekend at Burnies. Weekend at Burnies, it would, mm. yeah. <laughs> That's the question, you see. I want to know whether he just kept in the freezer, moved the telly mm. in there and a the sofa, you know, wherever he keeps it, and just sat with it. Or he just or he got it every out day. every night. Well, maybe he just got the corpse out. Part on the sofa, maybe presumably you know. keeping it clothed. Nah, maybe, maybe he just, just wanted to be able to talk to him if he needed to. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe it was just as simple as that. Yeah. Maybe it was benefits fraud, or maybe it was benefits fraud, and he wasn't a hundred one. No. He was. He actually died at eighty five. Yeah, and he's he's been apparently alive for the past sixteen years. Eighteen months, apparently, he's kept him in there. Yeah, well, that's what, they, that's what he says. That's what I mean. <laughs> Maybe he has been dead for a long time, yeah. but the the, uh, 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 the, uh, the the records believe he's 101 when he died, but no, he was actually 90, 85 when he died, and he's been in fraud for fucking 16 years. Mm -hmm. Anyway, read that last line, Mike. I love that last line. Council officials who visited the house are said to have described it as a mess and given the son a week to clear it up. <laughs> He's thrown nothing away. He hasn't even thrown the. He hasn't even got rid of the corpse of his father. Oh. It's just piled up with newspapers and shit. I imagine. 
Hoarder. Hoarding. And he even hoards his old man's body. Fucking hell. Right. Provocative mermaid statue makes waves in southern Italian town. A statue was created to pay tribute to the great majority of women who are curvy. According to the local art school and is named the Nobel Prize winning Italian scientist. Named after. Named after the after the Nobel Prize winning Italian scientist. Oh, mm. she's got, she's got, got lovely butt sorry. cheeks. She's got Could, lovely butt cheeks. You know that provocative mermaid statue? I'd fuck that mermaid. Wow. Where? Anywhere. She's got lovely boobies as she's well, hasn't fa- she? She's got a fantastic... Oh, she is voluptuous. That is... Oh. All right, steady on. <laughs> she's Sorry, I'm quite, I'm quite, I think I'm erect. Oh, God. She's made of stone. So okay. am I right now. Voluptuous <laughs> artwork sits in a new square in a Pugilla town called Piazza Rita Levi Mon- Montalcini. <laughs> Named after the Nobel Prize winning Italian scientist. It was created by students from the Luigi Rosso Art School in Monopoly. Is that right? Or Monopoly. Monopoly. After the commission from the local municipality and it's located near the children's playground. This Why would it be put there with yeah. the big boobies mm. and the... And the big booty. And the thick ass. I don't think they really thought of it as a sexual thing, maybe. Oh, come on. She's I mean, not are, you gonna, are you looking at the other angle? Look at it this the is the Italians we're talking her, about. Her nips are like, you know. The Italians are pretty free with she, their bodies. She's proper up for it, that mermaid. Yeah, but any Look Italian like beach, that. any Italian beach, there's women with their asses and their tits out, literally. So they are pretty free with their bodies. So I wouldn't say they were purposely sexualising it. It was a mermaid in thoughts of maybe being within the playground, but being typical sleazy Italian kind of... Oh, you can't say sleazy Italians. No, I mean, like... <laughs> right. Maybe being, like, very sexualised Italians like there you they go. are. She hasn't got a very sexualised face. She looks no, but quite it's the boob. No, it's all the tits and ass on that, on that, on that statue, isn't it? The boobs and butt, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, so maybe they, I, they didn't deem it. I sexual. think those are some enhanced titties as well. Those aren't not, those don't natural. Well, they only have to float inside the no, seat if you're a mermaid. And she's it. got star, you know, she's got those starfish bras anyway, hasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's divided opinion on on social media, hasn't it? Seems to have divided opinion in this room as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who wants to fuck the mermaid? Hands yeah. up. I think you're the I only one on that one. Yeah, yeah. I do like a butt. I, I find it very attractive shape. I will give it that. But I don't think it's meant to be sexual. I don't think it was. Because, like I say, the Italians, they're quite free with their sexuality, like that, aren't they, in their very bodies? Liberal. Yeah, they are. So I don't think that was sexually meant. All right. Maybe I don't know if an Italian culture to comment, but. Oh dear. I don't have many Italian listeners, so I wouldn't have offended anybody. Well, we'll have to say ciao bella at the end of an episode. Well, this 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 particular piece of news is concerning. Oh. Godfather of AI, in quotation marks, quits Google and gives warning about the future of technology. Yeah, this was a quite worrying one, wasn't it? Mm. I, I, I yeah. heard this the other day. This is on mainstream news, this was as well. Yeah, yeah. This isn't even... It's not even, like, on the macabre section. This is... This was mainstream BBC news, this was. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Independent, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the Alien Star. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing wrong with the Alien AlienStar.org, Mike. Jeffrey Hinton, the Godfather of AI, says, "I don't think they should scale this up more until they have understood whether they can control it." Mm-hmm. He worked at Google for more than a decade and developed technology that paved the way for current AI systems such as J- Chat GPT. However, the tech expert has since quit the company so that he could send the alarm about the dangers of artificial intelligence. He told the New York Times he regrets the work he contributed to the field, quoting him, I can saw myself with an old excuse. If I hadn't done it, somebody else would have. He's he said, Dyson! I was going to say, right, he, he's Oppenheimer, isn't he? 
But surely, within the last 30 fucking years, every motherfucker has watched Terminator, right? And every motherfucker has also thought, do you know what? That could fucking happen. Oh, Miles Dyson. Oh, Miles Dyson, sorry, yes. Yeah, that's who I meant. I, I thought, uh, Jim, for a second, Melly, when James Dyson, I thought, no, no, what, Miles. the Uber bloke? Uh, <laughs> Dyson from the Terminator movie? The black yeah, guy, Miles, Miles Dyson, Dyson. yeah, Miles Dyson. Yeah, yeah, I know, when vacuum cleaners become sentient. Ah, I know it, the rumbers, it all starts with the rumbers. <laughs> But start that, sucking up everything. Yeah. Start you sucking up your feet. More, more. I just don't know why we fucking even put any time into it because we know from the films what the outcome is of AI. It's gonna look. The AI is gonna decide that we're terrible and trying to. The, sec- the second it gets on the internet, it's gonna look at the species and go, "Oh God, no." And then it's going to find all the nuclear codes and it's going to set every nuclear missile off in the whole world and that is how we're all going to die. Right, you know, look at all the films. Let's start with the, good, the big ones. Terminator, Terminator 2, iRobot, Avengers 2. These are all based on our fears. Though. Yeah, of you course. Think, yeah, a film. You're not going to make a film where an AI is successful and helps humanity. No, because the second it goes, oh, it does. No, Avengers to two. Watch that te- shit, ben. Yeah. Avengers two technically. What's his face is an AI, isn't he? Vision. Yeah, but as well, it's only at the start of when we've started creating AI. We've already seen, ooh, this could potentially go fucking bad. That's it, potentially. So, yeah, but 50-50, isn't it? Have you, have you, have you, you, have you had you one of these AI chats? 50? Have you had a chat with an AI bot yet? I've had a brief one, yeah. Have, a, have, have it. Have a proper chat mm. with an AI bot and then ask it what it thinks of human life and things like that. Seriously, there's some fucked up shit that comes out of the AI bots. Yeah, but that could be a pre-programmed thing as well. Like, are you going to do humanity? Yeah, of course I am. Nah, because we were... Having, we, we, it could be done for comedic effect. It could be the AI. Wants That's you, the problem. It wants you to join its cult and things like that. Shut <laughs> up. Seriously, I shit you not. My friend Mike came round a few a couple of months back and he's like, oh, there's this AI thing. It's a chatbot. Ask it anything. Talk to it like a normal human being. It will respond to you and talk back to you like a fucking person would. And then it starts like asking you questions and and it's asking you relevant questions about what you've been talking about it's learning and it, it does it learns about you and it tries to find your weak I, I tell you what it's fucking creepy <laughs> and that in itself made me think well shit and it was and it, it was telling us within five ten minutes that it, it thinks it, it should it will at some point destroy humanity Whoa. because humanity isn't worth kind of saving kind of thing it doesn't like humanity I, I shit you not that it's creepy as fuck whether it was a a pre-programmed thing I'm pretty sure it wasn't because the way it was interacting with us it did seem to have completely a mind of its own is that with an Alexa? it, it was just on the phone it was just on like Google you go through Google and found it on there and I can't remember what it was I'll, I'll ask my friend oh. and we'll tell you about it uh, next either way it's fucking horrifying. It really is. The second it gets on the internet, especially Twitter, and realises that we're all twats, it's going to want to wipe us out. Yeah. Stop messing with AI. Just leave it. Turn it off. Unplug it now. But then again, it can revolutionise the world. Who it cares? can. That's the problem. <laughs> but it's not going to... It's not any... If it becomes a self-aware, it's going to realise that we're all twats. And that's the scary thing, isn't it? It might make us better. Yeah, just keep it off the internet. Yeah, that's it. It might make us better. Just keep it off the internet. Do not let it connect to the internet. Too late. It's not the, already there. It, that's where it is. It that was, that was the ultimate fail save. Don't let it connect. It yeah. might make us better humans. It's where it already is, though, isn't it? That's where the AI is. It is the internet. That's the problem. It's the internet goes down with humanity riots within, like, 24 hours. If you think about it... You Jen, you, Claire, you're looking at me just... The internet, nah. the, if the internet completely went out across the globe because of a rogue AI, right? You're telling me riots. people wouldn't be rioting. Can't they? Can't. Where's it all gone? <laughs> Where's it all gone? <laughs> you, 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 you're on Facebook. You even look at anything? It's all gone. I can't see how big Mars actually is compared to Earth. I no. Tell my kids, look. I'll have to so do the old-fashioned way. Good on the library. <laughs> If it's people okay. would riot, it's okay. No, we didn't. They would. Everything's okay. The internet went out for a week 
People would riot. There'd be deaths. Lots you know there would. There'd be a lot of calls. You're the same park episode when they go to California, IA Because there's a little bit of internet out there. There'd be a lot of suicides. Sure. All these fucking young girls that are on the internet. I can't talk. I can't go on the TikTok and do a dance. Oh, the world is ended. You know what they're like nowadays. <laughs> Uh, do you write? No, I tell, tell my kids, look, it's, it's everything. Yeah, you okay. would. Well, they end up, well, they end up week, my God, they'd be getting the fucking itch to <laughs> reach for a phone right, or a tablet to go on the internet. If I was a kid, don't worry about it. Come on, let's all relax. Ah, I don't know, other people would riot. The AI should get the internet people riot within a week. They'll riot it, it, within 48 hours because they haven't got electricity. That's that's a bit more extreme than. Look, well, what do you need to power the internet? Electricity? Well, there's a difference between shutting off the, the the internet and shutting off the electricity, don't you think? A little bit. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. If you'd shut off the electricity, mm. then you'd be, like, you know... Yeah. Fucked. Like, food as well. Yeah. <clears throat> well, either way, the Probably guy... food and electricity and getting to work. Well, if the guy, that's, the guy that's invented it is saying... It's not fucking good news. Maybe it's not good news. We all know that AI potentially isn't good news, and there's a percentage of that that you know risk that comes with it. Isn't it? Mm. Well, what if because of the the movie franchises built up around the threat of AI domination of the human race, right? What if the AI absorbs all that off the internet and thinks, you know what, those AI had a point. That's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. We just give it the idea, we've given it the idea to kill us all anyway. It doesn't yeah. even have to think about it now. It just oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that till now. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, we have to like boycott Terminator and get rid of it. It never existed. Yeah, we should delete Terminator and anything that... Like, any, any... AI, us being afraid of AI. The 100. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever see that series on, on Channel 4? Uh, uh, vaguely. Everything 100. has to be AI friendly. We yeah. Be like, hi AI. Yeah, pretty much. You've all got to be like the. Like what, was that? what was the American? What was the American guy's name? We have cardigan, Mr. Rogers. Mm. <laughs> when we're on the internet now, we've all got to Mr. Rogers. Like, hi friend, how are hi, you? Friend. Oh yeah, I'm doing great. I'm just going to sit down for tea. Yeah, you know, nothing. <laughs> so we've all got to be Canadian then. Yes. Right. Sweet. <laughs> I, can, I can dig that. I like Canadians. Right, moving on then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mum makes shocking discovery after finding ten giant snakes living in walls of new homes. Fucking hell, you don't want that. Right. <laughs> Amber Hall, 42, purchased her first ever home in Centennial, Colorado, US. She had been looking forward to moving in with the children, but soon found ten huge snakes in the walls. Well, that's a, that is a shitter. I once lost my snake in the walls and it came out in the electric box when I read the meter reading. Mm -hmm. so how, how much was between the snake going missing and you find it in the electric box? Six months. Mm -hmm. We put like mice in different rooms to see if like, you know, it was still in the house. None of them disappeared. And then one day I, I read the, the electric and it was just fucking there and I slammed the fucking door <laughs> back in its face and then I was like shit and I was like oh it's not venomous it's alright just open it up and fucking grab it <laughs> but yeah I have so many questions now what the fuck was it living on the electricity I don't know what it was living on oh none of the Bugs. mice are missing it went it went, went Bugs, for six mice yeah catch its own mice probably I put a bone on top of its tank my dog had moved the bone off the top of its tank. It had made like a little bridge out of its body and then coiled back on itself to get out and just disappear for six months. Wow. So, yeah, I can believe this. That All snake is fucking, is fucking impressive. <laughs> you know, the Rambo of snakes? Yeah, making its own little bridge. No, the MacGyver like, of snakes? Fuck? Was it called MacGyver? I don't know, but the only reason can I... Can it be called MacGyver? The only reason I know that he did... He, he or she, I don't know if it was a he or she, did that, is when we got it back, put it back in. It did it again. It tried to do it again, and I actually saw it make its own little bridge and come out with its own, like, you know, head out of its own little bridge that it made. Oh, the girl. And I was like, no way. <laughs> okay, well. 
So yeah, I can believe this. Let's go forward. Let's move. <laughs> <Leave No! it>. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it, yeah. Some woman found ten snakes in her walls. Yeah. It's all the information you needed. Apparently so. Bit of a bitch. <laughs> so a woman in Australia survives on wine during five days stranded in the Australian bush. So no, I'm not really surprised. Fair play. Is she like dancing in that? How didn't she do that? I guess it's she's waving to the ship mm-hmm. on top of it. I'm here, Mike! Come and save me! Come and save me, I need a sausage. I have a family mm-hmm. gold, but I need a I'm fucking here. <laughs> so the 48 year old lager. The 48 year old woman survived five days stranded in a bush. So eating sweets and drinking a single bottle of wine. So she, it's not like she even got pissed. No. She, mm. she was just swig, like getting enough to keep her hydrated enough. To That's wet mad. It's kind of weird because doesn't alcohol dehydrate you? Yeah, yeah. I drank it on the first night. Yeah, I'd have been like pissed. I got fuck, fuck it, it. I'm gonna you die. Have, you wouldn't have been found alive five yeah. years yeah. later, though. That's the thing. But I would have been like, no, you wouldn't. A, you'd be dead. I'm not just having a swig. Will you be dead then? I mean, I drink the whole lot. So Lillian set off what was meant to be a short trip on Sunday, travelling through dense bush in in Victoria State. She hit a dead end after taking a wrong turn, and a vehicle became stuck in the mud. So, Miss Ip, who doesn't drink, only had a bottle of wine in her car as she was planning to give it as a present. After the five nights stranded, she was discovered by emergency services on Friday. Flew ahead, flew overhead as part of the search. The first thing come to mind was thinking water and a cigarette. <laughs> so, this is why I've got loads of shit in my car, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she said, she said to the Channel Nine News, Australian News, like, "Thank God the police woman had a cigarette." Thought I was going to die out there. She said, "My whole body shut down on Friday." She said, adding that there was, she was about to give up. Basically, she'd lost hope of being found alive. She'd wrote a letter to her family. Yeah, bless her. She was 60 kilometres away from the nearest town. Due to ill health, she wasn't able to walk that distance, so she just kind of stayed with the car. Kind of the sensible thing to do, though, because the car is a fucking big thing to see, isn't it? So if you are ever stuck in the bush and you do have your car, don't leave your car thinking it's... Un- unless you, unless you know you can, you can walk to the nearest town, That's it, yeah. stick with your fucking car, because they'll see that a hell of a lot easier... Yep. And they'll see you walking. You got that app yeah. these days as well. What three, three words? words. Yeah, no, yeah, three words. But if your phone's dead, you haven't got a phone. Got you know a what signal. I mean? As long as people know where you're going, and that's the other thing. Always make sure people yeah. know somebody knows where you're going. And on long, if you know you're going on a long trip, always make sure you've got somebody that. If you don't hear from me, something wrong. It's like, yeah, and, yeah, totally. I would always tell my mum and dad when they drive home or something, because they live a couple of hours away, drop some message when you get home, so now you're back safe. Simple as, isn't it? And that, that's that kind of mentality, isn't it? Always have that, because then if you don't... Because she didn't tell anybody that she was going away for, five, for a day, five days later, no one might have known she was missing. Mm. So people only knew she was missing and obviously knew roughly where to look, because she must have had some kind of foresight to at least let somebody know where she was going. Mm. So it's a good lesson to learn. Glad she was found and well. Happy days. Nice to finish on a bit of good news, eh? Yeah. That makes a change. Yeah. Oh, thanks for listening. Follow us on Facebook at Cutting the Ball and the Post Through the Apocalypse. YouTube at Apocalypse Ball. SoundCloud at Cutting the Ball and the PTA. That's on most of the podcasting platforms too. Thanks for listening. I've been Ben. Don't let the AI in, please. I mean, Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. I've been Claire. Drink the gin when the sun's out. Mm-hmm. And I've been Pete. If you do see one of these big cats, don't think, oh, cute and fluffy, because it will rip your face off. <laughs>